Everybody does it better. DJ Illusion. Nobody does it quite the way you do. Why'd you have to be so good? This is the flashback show. You can handle it. It's just so good. Yeah. So fine. DJ Illusion. So fine. Blow my mind. Ooh. Coming up next on the Flashback Show, our special guest. All will be revealed. You know what to do. The voice of reason you have just heard belongs to the renowned DJ Illusion. Don't, don't touch that dial. Welcome back to the Flashback Show. Right now, my guest in the studio hot seat this evening is a British bass soul music singer. Born in South London, he started his musical journey when he and his siblings released the song I'm Lucky and Family Back in 1989. He also fronted the James Taylor Quartet and has duetted with Julia Roberts, Misha Paris, Vanessa Simon, Beverly Knight and many, many more. Also currently in the UK soul band, the British Collective with Omar, Donnie, Junior Gisco. He has released five albums, Full Circle Within a Social Soul, back in 1993. Mind is the Keeper, 1997. Please take this personal, 1998. Brighter Day in 2009. And right now, his brand new album in 2019, People Make Change. Let's give him a big round of applause and a massive Crackers Radio welcome to our special guest on the Flashback Show, Noel McCoy. Right, that's enough now. Stop. How are we doing, Noel? Well, I'm doing very well, but I'd just like to say from McCoy, which is my family group, my siblings, Cornell, Robin and Jeanette McCoy, first and foremost, that's where it started, and then the JTQ, and most currently, the British Collective. This is The Flashback Show. Now let's take you back in the flashback time tunnel, and let's start at the beginning. How I got into music was from my mother. My mother was a singer, very good singer, and my mother's sister, my aunt Barbara. My mother was the better vocalist out of the two of them, I would say that, but that's the truth. Um, but my mother didn't have the, um, the hunger as much as her younger sister, so her younger sister pursued a career with Decca Records and toured the, the world with Roy Orbison, um, supporting him and several other things. And my mum would look after her children and obviously her own. So, um, yeah, that's um, how I got inspired to be in music, the very first inspiration. How would you describe the music that you typically... Create. Well, I've always I coined the phrase um, spiritual, social, soul, and that's what I coined the phrase many, many years ago. That's how I define my music. And what is your creative process like? Um, it can differ. It can be from observational issues. It can be from um, experiencing um, highs and lows. Um, but most of it, it's to do with my life. You know, each day I live, I meet. I'm I'm a sociable person, so I talk and meet and greet a lot of people so a lot of my song my inspiration comes from people and real real issues next question as an artist who writes songs and some fantastic songs over the years who have you written for i've written songs for cliff richard where i've received gold and platinum discs i've written songs for the bbc 1994 commonwealth games i co-wrote with steve spyro and sang the the title track called the brave about the north american indians where the games were situated at that time um, I write songs for Mark Morrison. I write songs for quite a lot of people in soul and reggae music. Shardell Roden is a, a reggae artist who we will be um, featuring on our um, Sisters in Spirit album, which comes out next year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in terms of writing for people, Jackie Graham, the great um, iconic Jackie Graham, our soul um, matriarch in this country, England. Yeah, I've written songs for her. I've written songs for a lot of um, TV as well. You know, a lot of my works with uh, with Running Loose uh, children's ITV programme back in the 80s. Um, I wrote all the songs for the 12 episodes and um, really opened my eyes into writing and putting songs to visual. They showed me, ITV people showed me how to uh, make an image per second per frame. Um, so yeah. Wow, the talented Mr Noel McCoy. I do like this next question. If you could open a show for any artist, who would it be, Noel? Um, I'd love to open up 
for Bob Marley. Are you talking living or past and, and just out of the anyone who had, you know, whether they're past or here? Uh, past and present, why not? Yeah, well, I'd love to open up for um, Dennis Brown. I'd love to open up for the great Luther Vandross. I'd love to open up for Chaka Khan and Rufus. I'd love to open up for... I could keep going. No, there's so many acts what I, you know, I used to go and watch as a kid. Yeah. So to see them, then the Cameo, I'd like to... I, I was on the same bill as Cameo the year before last at a festival. So yeah, these kind of people who inspire me. So many, that's just a few of them. What's a great selection of artists to choose from? You touched on Dennis Brown and a few of the artists that you'd like to open a show for. But musically, who would be your actually number one favourite artist of all time? And that's a very difficult question. We'll find it hard to find the number one artist but there's got to be someone that's top of the list who will that be you know like stevie wonder is like throughout my years that's why i got that's how you know my mum inspired me to sing but then the people i used to listen to were like stevie wonder a lot and a lot of the motown stuff so i'd i'd, I'd say you know i actually um worked with stevie wonder via junior Giscom after a gig he did at the o2 and me and him were jamming he was on keys i was on and we jammed it was amazing um i'd like to um i think he's the biggest inspiration from my early years and you know what you learn when you're young you keep a lot of those um the right the stuff what you keep you know phrases you know there was a time when i was younger i sounded so much like stevie the record labels would say oh he sounds so much like stevie wonder which i thought would have been a plus but they always put that in the, and so I stopped listening to him to create, had to create my sound. And um, yeah, so I say Stevie Wonder, there's many others. There's a close call between Stevie and Dennis Brown, I'd say. Fantastic. Get down! The Flashback Show. It's a deal. It's a steal. Across the World Wide Web. Welcome back to The Flashback Show with my special guest this Monday evening, Mel McCoy. Let's carry on with the question, show. We know you have performed over the years many, many songs now, but what is your favourite song that you like to perform? Well, that's a big question. Um, I love performing Family, the song what sort of got me and my siblings on the map. Yeah, so song like Family, that means a lot. I love performing that song. I have to perform it everywhere I go. I never get fed up of it. There was a time, a few years back, I was like, I have to perform it. I'm not fed up of performing, but I just wanted to add different songs and add that add new songs but family I then realised that that is the song what people know you for so it is that song family yeah. and is that song a personal personal touch for you yeah because it's a lot to do with what I was going through my my relationship and what two of my friends were going through so the song just came really instantly um, I was travelling on a train the underground to a, to a meeting and uh, the song just came the scenarios I was just thinking about what I was going through and what my mates were going through and then the song and melody just came one time. Family, play next. The Flashback Show, across the World Wide Web. Yeah, yeah. 
is not seen to reason then. See, I've been caught deceiving, and things will never be the same. Families need their fathers, a mother needs a shoulder to cry on when she's over every day. I'm all about the children, now they're going to suffer. Why you're just playing over The families don't need the fathers Every day Written and produced by Mo McCoy for Real McCoy Music Productions. Timeless. Let's carry on with the questions. You're going to like this one. You've mentioned a few artists that you love, but who do you actually really admire? Past and present, why not? I admire so many. Morris White, I admire John Holt, I admire Beatles, Doris Day, Frank Sinatra. These are people I really grew up on listening to. My mum my was a big fan of, of these artists. So I admire um, Nat King Cole for his timing as a musician, pianist, a serious pianist, you know, people know him for his voice, very distinctive, but his playing was phenomenal, he was a great jazz musician, so I admire um, him and he paved the way for most of us, him, Ray Charles, I admire Ray Charles, so it's a cross between Ray Charles and Nat King Cole. That's a great selection of artists. The next question, a lot of fans wanted to ask you, what is the most trouble you've ever got into? Trouble? I've been in lots of trouble. I'm a troubled man. Yeah, especially when I was growing up in the 70s, late 70s, 80s, they put this law called SUS. So they were, you know, I was getting troubled all the time, stopped on the street, searched. Very embarrassing. I just didn't get it um, that it was just geared at any young black kid. We were getting stopped at an alarming rate, at an alarming rate. And so that was a lot of trouble in my life. I remember this happening and it mounted up to a riot in Brixton, in Battersea, in Mons, of all of the major boroughs. There were riots. This is in the 80s, early 80s. I remember that. That was really a time where when you go out as a young kid, you know, you, was, you weren't sure, you know, whether you were going to get stopped because the police were harassing at a higher level so that I remember that as being a troubled time for me and how do you see now the situation with the young youth and the knife crime in London well we, we all can see that it's a, it's a sad thing and it's a 
it's 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 diabolical to to see young people using knives. Not when they say these things on t- on TV, a youth got stabbed, you know, killed. What they don't really they don't go into what really what kind of a knife they're using these massive uh, Rambo knives, which are thick and and they're almost like a half of a sword, and they got these jagged edges. So when they when these kids are stabbing, they're, they're not they look they're stabbing. And it's 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 really weird what's happening that a young person can have that kind of fall. And black on black, this is is it's mainly black on black because all of these gangs or whatever, there's white, black, Asian, all they're all in the gang. But for some reason, they're only killing black on black. So I see this as a serious um, problem in our society. It's a minority. It's not the majority. It's hyped as it's a majority, but it's only minority. But it's, it causes peer pressure so then every youth carries a knife to protect themselves and I get that but I do know that one of the things I understand about this society I live in especially this country called England and the history of England we have a Queen uh, Parliamentary um, Committee and we have local MPs and we can't solve a problem with kids stabbing one another nah. I don't buy that I, buy th- I know that this is done on purpose it's it's given they're given these kids freedom to do this because if you can go to Iran, Iraq, or all these places where Britain is ally to America and vice versa, they go out there and they they kill a lot of people and they solve problems for these countries. Well, not solve them entirely. They go there and they they mess up the place, they bomb up the place, etc. We've seen it. I'm, not, I'm talking all truth here. So I'm saying, how come you can't sort out? what's going on in your own back garden and you're going all over the world sorting out everybody else's problems very good point there Noel and if you was in charge how would you change it and what would you do to protect the youth of today well you asked me a question not anybody well we've all got an answer but I work with youth and have done for the past over 30 years I have a company called the Fix Up Programme which I ran for seven years solid taking youth into the studio and showing them how to use the equipment, showing them to ways they can tell their stories through using sound effects and stuff like that. Just like the Arches on Radio 4, we did our own version with the kids, uh, the area they came from in Stonebridge, Halton, and they were all going for a lot of youth pressure and lots of parental pressure as well. So they did their story and it was very successful. It came on a local radio station called Life FM. So I know that that's one way of engaging youth, getting them in, telling their stories, counselling, it's almost counselling. We did a lot of counselling with the Fix Up programme, with Deborah Blackwood, who did that side of it. It was two of us, but we employed a lot of people when we did our workshops. So I know how to engage with youth, so I know I would use what I know more about is arts. I engage them through the arts. Now, a lot of people say, well, uh, the young people are bored. Well, of course they're bored because there's nowhere for them to go. They've shut down all the youth clubs. When we were kids, we used to have like 10, 10 youth clubs in your in just the area where you lived, in a venture playground. So, and then if you go out to another it ends like Brixton or Wandsworth, there's another 10 in each. So there's always places to go and, and do something. You could never be bored. Whereas our young people now, we know that they have a com- they have a computer as a phone, so you can get any information, you can get buy things. So they feel they don't need to um, exercise or to do things like what we did when we were young, young people. Maybe if we were the same age as these young people, we'd be doing the same, maybe. But I know myself, I like to... I'm a team player, so I like football. I love anything to do with sports and, and teamwork. So I, that's me. And I believe that all children, most children like that, they like to in, in, engage. But with the advent of this computer society world, we're losing our children to it and they're not getting any it's not doing it with their minds because too much of one thing my mum used to always say is not good so you have to have balance and one good thing every young people needs to do is exercise because you're stretching your bones your, your muscles and your bones it's growing and it strengthens so it's stuff what you need to do you have the energy to do it so but a lot of the young people are fearful for their lives and they carry knives and they're they're in fear they're in shock and they have to grow up too quick they're not having any childhood are they Exactly, so they have to think for themselves. They have to think like a soldier, really. You know, no child should be thinking like a soldier. In London, I, I, I just think that it's sad and it's all by design because I really do believe that this country, with its history, military, 
etc they could solve the problem with a click but they allow it to happen so that they can put a bad a bad stain on the black youth and what is the best advice that you've been given over the years my mum gave me great advice she got loads of parables advice like this show me your company and i will tell you who you are and that's stayed with me forever because at first i didn't really understand it as a kid and as i grew with friends you know there's good and bad friends there's friends who's not really your friends keep your enemies close to you all of these kind of things but words what my mum would say to me and it made me suss out to keep by you and, and if anything don't keep too many people by you, which i don't i have a lot of friends obviously i'm a I'm in the, in the entertainment business, so a lot of people, they want to be your friends. And now we've got Facebook and all these things. Everybody's your friend. They're not really your friends. They're just people who want to be your friends or they want to have conversation. But friendship, it, it takes years for friendship to build. Sometimes you meet people who are really special. You've already known them, but they're like, you've known them forever. Forever, they'll do. You mean like DJ Illusion? Yeah. Just like this geezer called DJ Illusion. <laughs> So, you know, that's so, you know, friendship is something what you have to feel and that person has to feel the same. And then you have that that common bond as a friend. Definitely agree on that one. And if you could change anything back going back into the music industry, what would it be? No. Me? Change what I could change for myself or change the industry for in, myself? In b- both concepts. Okay. Well, to change me, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to change anything about me, but. I just like to have gone to music college or university to study music more from the theory side, which I did a bit. I did it myself. I bought books and I learned myself how to read and write music, and I've done operas and stuff. And I understand, um, you know, musical how to write and to, to understand reading music. So that's something I would have loved to have done, and I would have loved to have, um, for the industry. I would have loved for them to teach young people about music from school, not just playing an instrument, but the industry side of the music industry, so that they would have a bit more knowledge on what they were getting into, because what we have now, anyone can make beats on a garage band and stuff, you can make songs, so everybody's a musician now, but everybody's not really a musician, everybody's just jamming and recording, just like when I was a kid, we they had a thing called a tape cassette, so everybody would tape shows off of the radio, tape themselves talking. That's what most kids are doing now. And adults, they're singing over tracks. And some of them sound great, but to be a musician, you have to understand other things about music, about people, about songwriting, about how you um, use the booth when you're in a booth. Most of them don't even have a booth. They just sing into the computer from a mic. It goes direct, it's 16-bit, 24-bit, it's high res. You can hear everything. And um, you know, a lot of people have hits. It's the times we're living in, but people like myself and musicians who studied their craft and, you know, gone through it for years, understand it better. That's what I call a musician. So there's a lot of people who make music and there's a lot of people who are musicians. It's the difference. You're listening to No McCoy on The Flashback Show. It ain't nothing but a soul thing. Welcome back to The Flashback Show with my special guest this Monday evening, No McCoy. Let's carry on with the question, shall we? Mo, what advice would you have for an emerging artist right now? My advice to young people, if you feel that you want to get into this industry called the music industry, I'd say you have to start by learning an instrument. A guitar, acoustic guitar, a keyboard. You can get these keyboards in, cheap keyboards. Just learning notes, learning how to um, shape notes, chords, um, you can go online and there's so many different um, tutorials where you can learn online. So I'd say, you know, learn an instrument first. And secondly, find out what exactly your forte is. Because a lot of young people do chatting or they make the beats. But there are other aspects to the industry. There's marketing, there's plugging, distribution many other aspects to the music industry now there's so many like visual sides to it because you can you know your phone has once again the 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 pixels on phones are so good you can make films on them so you know i'd say to the young people if you really want to do this thing do your research and learn an instrument that's the first thing you should understand how music is created and then you may be somebody who can have a career in the industry and it might not be um as an artist, as a front person, it could be some, you know, you enjoy playing, knowing that you can play an instrument, but you know that you could you could contribute 
um, elsewhere in the industry. Mm-hmm. So I'd say to most young people, do that first. The instrument is key. Why I always say that? Because you and your instrument are at one. When you understand that, then you can um, you can grow, and you can grow. And you don't necessarily have to be the front person. You could be a writer. So yeah, learn an instrument. That's what I'd say. That's fantastic advice out there to anyone listening right now. Definitely take that on board what Noel just said because you know it's so true. If you can learn an instrument or anything in that sort of order, it does help in your future. And Noel, what sort of instrument do you play? Well, I play. I learned to play guitar, um, drums, bass. Um, so yeah, the basics: drums, bass, keys. You know, I love my bass. Yeah, man. Bass yeah. is the. You know, bass is my. Drums are my first instrument. Then bass. So I used to play a lot of bass and then um, keyboards. Um, so it's all about practice. You know, I have friends show me chords and stuff, but I learnt myself. I've never had lessons more than so. So hence that's why I answered the question earlier on saying that I would like to go to college. But I've learnt, you know, you can learn yourself. And um, I, have, I have done so. I play all those instruments pretty well when I want to. The more you practice, the, more, the better you get. That's so true. The more practice, the better you get in anything you do in life. We'll be back in just a tick. Visit our updated website at crackersradio.com. Illusion. Illusion on Crackers Radio. On Crackers Radio. We've got Mr. Noel McQuay in the studio with us on this Flashback Monday. Welcome back, Noel. I'm still here. (laughs) You're still here. You've got a brand new album out called People Make Change. Tell us about this brand new album. Um, yeah, People Make Change, for God's sake. It's um, an album, like what it says on the lid, on the tin, it's People Make Change. So there's some conscious, uh, thought-provoking songs in there and there's um, some nice love songs, as I do. So the album's really a kind of mid-tempo, ballad-tempo album. It's very lo-fi vibe yeah it's songs if people know my stuff spiritual social soul as i said before so we're dealing with the spirit dealing with the soul of people and the love for one another so it's it's love songs and conscious songs and what inspired you to make this album and bring it out right now i'll be honest with you the inspiration was the tempos of the songs more than the the, the titles so i'm a ballad i really love ballads um a lot of the songs will come out especially the jtq era McCoy were really up-tempo songs, very funky and stuff. But I'm really a balladist, so I wanted to do this kind of tempo album for a long time. So um, it was conceptual to a point, but it was just more to do with the tempo and the delivery that I could sing slower and stuff, the fast, hard stuff. There's, there's only one track up on there, Let It, Let it Go, which is up-tempo in that way. But all the songs are very melodic and very melancholy and them down tempo yeah I mean I've listened to the album and there's some really excellent tracks in there. I mean I like people make change mm-hmm. I like real love mm-hmm. and I actually like making love music mm-hmm. the Donny remix as well is really excellent I mean and you've got a little exclusive over there which we're going to play next called Shake oh yeah you're gonna shake your bum to this because this is where it all started for me Battersea living in an estate with all my mates T-Rex we loved all music and we sung them on the on the staircase the acoustics were amazing so that's why I did a lot of my trying out from about eight years old going into you know I still do that when I go to my mom they're knocking down the flats we actually moved in 968 brand new flats massive estate and then hit they're knocking down the whole estate to build rebuild um, obviously gentrification um, Clapham Junction right near the station I lived uh, right near Battersea Park it's a uh, I mean, they've offered my mum the new new build. They're beautiful. I don't know. She may take one. She may not. But they, they're building new flats for the residents to go and stay in there until they finish them. So it's an exciting time in Batsy Change. A lot of change going on. I mean, sorry to go off on one, but that song, Shake What You're Gonna Play, it, it really epitomises where I come from and why I do what I do. So I really, it's a song close to my heart. And... Um, it's an ode to Ian Jewelry, who I met a few times along the way. Introduce the song to us now. So yeah, this song is called Shake by Myself. Um, I wrote, I wrote, I have to big up the man that I wrote it with, with um, Jerry and Tony. Tony Hibbert and Jerry O'Reilly. So um, 
great guys, uh, ex hippies. Uh, an amazing project. In fact, that this song comes from an album. I put it on that album, my, my album, but it's actually from a, a Northern Soul album. Um, so that's that. I did the Northern Soul album with those two guys. So I can't wait for that one to come out as well. Shake, play right now. Yeah. I'll be for your reserve, I pull, but don't lick the air that I'm breathing. My body wants more, so shake. Get it a bit, stand it in a line. It's all calm, getting in the room, let's go. Let's go, hey, 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 hold it, shake, shake. Shake, one, two, three, go. Shake, shake it, we don't got the time. We're all right, there's a limit, it's a crash, hey, hold up, hey, who's got the damn time? Shake, shake it. One, two, three, four. I thought I got a vibe, but didn't write it down. Shit. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I hope it comes again. The sunrise is going down beneath my head, and my eyes are heavy. I feel so, so blessed. But hey, don't sleep. The smell of the jasmine and the jerk is arousing me. So wake. Noel McCoy and you're listening to my new album, the title track People Make Change DJ Illusion bringing soul to the cities Does anybody really care Seems everybody for a brighter day How times have changed 
You just heard People Make Change by Mr. Noel McCoy. What a fantastic song that is. We have an exclusive song that no one's ever heard. And we are privileged. Oh my God. Yes, everyone is excited. <laughs> Studio B as well, everyone's yeah. jumping up and down. <laughs> but this next song, oh my God. When I first heard it, I just went, yes, this is going to be a smash. Mm. Yes, well, why don't we let you tell the people out there? All right, this is a song what you should know. If you know of my, myself, McCoy and my siblings, this is a rendition, a remake, a refix of my classic family, rejigged by my partner in crime, Robbie T, is at the helm of the remix on this one. Okay, so you got a exclusive on the flashback show, Family 2020, with DJ Illusion. We are family, and we must stay together to make this world a better place. Here's a brand new, brand new banger. Bring the tune down, five. You, he's watching you. Oh, oh. I wonder what you're doing in front of him now. Soon he'll be copying you. Following the papa figure. Oh, yeah. I question my morality. Are you tuned into reality? It's so easy just to blame. Yeah. And what about the people who believe in humanity? Standing for equality. After all, we are the same. Yeah. Families need each other, and we should stay together to make this world a better place every day. So what about the ones who have to suffer and sacrifice their freedom? These families need each other every day. And you're listening to Crackers Radio Blessing. For a while, I'll wait a while and hope and pray for change. Hope and pray. It won't be long, my children will be here soon. But when they're all gone, I'm all alone, alone again. I question my morality. Are you tuned into reality? So easy just to blame. Yeah. And what about the people who believe in humanity? Standing for equality. After all, we are the same. Yeah. Families need each other. Oh, God. And we should stay together to make this world a better place every day. What about the children? So what about the ones who have to suffer? Are you gonna make sacrifice? them suffer? Hey, Noel McCoy here. Make sure you tune into the flashback show with my man, Illusion. Keep it cracking. You 
illusion on the flashback show. Get past the people, get past the hit man. You're listening to DJ Illusion on the flashback show. On the good foot. Oh yeah. On the good foot. Come on, come on, come on. You just heard the sounds of family and exclusive for Crackers Radio right here on the Flashback Show this Monday evening with our special guest, Mr. Noel McCoy. Welcome back, Noel. Nice to be back. Also on the album, you have a track called Making Love Music, remixed by Donny. Oh yeah, I love that refix. It's a favourite track of my mother's. Beautiful song, which I did with my siblings, Jeanette, Robin Cornell. Yeah, I just think that Donny took the track to the next level. Um, very minimalistic, very groovy, funky. I haven't released any songs off of my album, and if I was to, um, I, I think I'd go with that one first. Coming up next, Making Love Music by Mr. Noel McCoy. <laughs>
This is the Flashback so, Show. So, so fine, you blow my mind. Ooh. We're listening to the tracks from the album People Make Change from Mr. Noel McCoy. Another one we're going to play next, which I do like. When I saw the first the title, I actually thought he was doing a cover version of Gregory Isaacs, but it's called Night Nurse. So you can do a cover version? Yeah, well, it's not, but it was inspired by the title of his song. And I just wrote a complete song, different song about a night nurse being the person I want to come and, and nurse me. Yeah, we can all do a bit of good loving, can't we? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. It's all about loving and tender loving care. OK, coming up next, Night Nurse. Run the tune. OK, this is Noel McCoy and you're going to be listening to a song from my album. The song is called Night Nurse on The Flashback Show.
we've got Mr. No McCoy in the house, our special guest. Hey, Mr. Illusion, what you say? <laughs> Going back to People Make Change, the album. We're going to finish it off with playing a track called Lonely Ones. Tell us a bit about this song. This song is about what it says. You know, like, we all feel lonely at times, yeah? So it's a kind of, not slit your wrist, but it's like really kind of low, low fire. It, um, it's about our emotions and it's a slow sort of song. You're going to hear it in any second now. But I just wrote because I, I, my moments of being low, um, you can get stuff out of that. Mm-hmm. You can get stuff out. I can write stuff about happiness, write stuff about being sad. So this was a time when I was just going through a low period and I was just observing, observer, observing um, people who feel low and lonely and a lot of homeless. A lot of, mm-hmm. a lot of people suffering loneliness, actually, but there's levels and it? it's different levels. So that's where this song came from. Um, so, But really, it's a song about um, the video. I shot a video for it. Um, it shows a character who's dishevelled and you can tell he once had life, had children, had family, but lost it all and is like a vagrant, but he has dignity. And the video shows that even though you might be lonely and not have anywhere and not have anyone, you can still hold on to your pride and Mm -hmm. your dignity. So that's what it shows. So the the song is about, um, at the end of the day, digging deep and keeping your dignity. Where can we catch this video? The video has been, it's not edited yet, we've shot all the parts, it just needs to be edited. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm going to do something with, I sent it to the Big Issue editor and I'd like to contribute a lot of the proceeds to The Homeless. So we'll see. Okay, this is Noel McCoy and I'm going to play you a song from my album People Make Change. This song is called Lonely Ones. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. 
Hi, this is Noel McCoy, and you're listening to my favorite DJ, Illusion, on the Flashback Show. Visit www.djillusion.co.uk. Now, back to the Flashback Show. Welcome back to the Flashback Show with my special guest this Monday evening, Noel McCoy. Let's flashback back in time and tell us about the dancers at Crackers, the club in Wardour Street in London West End. The music, the vibe that George Power, who was the resident DJ at the time, tell us about that now. Well, that was an amazing time for me because it was on a Friday afternoon, so we would have to bunk school and go down to this club on Wardour Street in the West End, one of the first West End clubs I went to. Um, and the dancers who I saw were all from different parts of London. And it was amazing, we used to go every Friday and then they, we would go on a Sunday and a Thursday, you know, like, so we were residents. Um, George Power made that happen in the sense that one of the first uh, DJs to allow young black kids into West End clubs listening to soul music, great soul and jazz music. And then it cottoned on and within no time there were so many clubs, soul clubs in the West End. Lyceum was a great time I used to have there. Um, Steve Walsh, all these kind of people. Um, so yeah, it all started from Crackers. Yeah, the dancers, the vibe, what, 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 what um, he brought to the table was unique. Was the beginning of funk soul music of my generation. So he was a pioneer of his time. Oh, definitely. Yeah, George Power was the guy. You ask anybody who really knew the scene. A lot of guys who DJs who were on the scene, who were in the industry, um, all these stations, big stations, they wasn't there. You know, it was so, I, I feel so honoured to have been there. Not that many people went to Crackers, but the people who did, they they, they would, they could explain to you the same as I am, um, saying that it was, a, it, was, it was different. It was a great feeling to be in the West End of all the busy, noisy um, madness. Um, that would be our home for, to this day, you know, the amount of shows I've performed in the West End, the amount of nights I've run in the West End. So yeah, that was the first of it for me and for many others. And for many other UK artists that went through that club and DJs that are out now, right now, that are performing from Norman Jay to Trevor Nelson to so many DJs that George basically taught yeah. and brought in. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, but let's, let's let this thing straight. We were all going clubs before, way before that, soul clubs, but that was in your local area. George was the first to bring it to, well, to, to, to allow because there were many other clubs, gay clubs, which were black guys were going there, but, you know, all kinds, homosexual and straight guys, just to hear the music. There were clubs in the West End. Um, also, there were gay guys going to Crackers because there wasn't that many clubs there they could go. So it was a breakthrough, yeah, it was a breakthrough, definitely. And what sort of uh, artists do you remember going through Crackers at the time? Or do you remember them before they became artists? Yeah, I remember lots of artists. I remember Torso, the group Torso. They... Uh, Second image, I remember all them lot up there. I only knew this because then when a few years down the line you got this TV show called Soul Train and these guys were all the dancers who would be at Crackers, the proper dancers, they were dancing at Soul Train. So you got to see these guys, the world got to see them. Um, so yeah, so many. When I, I never went to Soul Train, it was up the road from where I lived, funny enough, but I always said I wanted to perform in it when I go there. So I never went, all my mates went and then would dance up there. So I'd see a lot of them guys at Crackers from up north, like they would be on that show. So we missed your dancing skills on the Soul Train, did we? Yeah, man, you missed that, yes, because I was only going to give them that if I was going to be an artist. But the reality of it is I couldn't have been because I was in a rock band at that time. When everybody loose ends, all of them bands, I was in Soul way before that. But then I got in this rock band and then we were like, just making, uh, recording and learning, you know, like your apprenticeship as it were, for seven years. Well, tell us a bit about the rock band and Ian Jury. Oh, Ian Jury was not part of the rock band, but the, the, the studio where we were doing all our works was, was given to us by my brother-in-law, who was in a band called Matumbi, a bass player, and Eton Blake. And he, they would support the enduring the blockheads so some of the times they would I'd go to the shows or in the tour buses I remember meeting him in the tour bus when they were just going on to do like UK tour so I met him and I did a song more recently which is an ode to him he inspired a whole kind of flow cockney flow um, so yeah you know um, I was into soul 
always, but the rock thing was just a, a, an extension because I, I then understood that rock is, is, is black music born from blues. Um, so it was easy to adjust. It was a fusion band, and we did a lot of homework, apprenticeship, years, seven years. So in those seven years, when all Soul Train and all these programs were on, I was in the rock thing. We didn't have Soul Trains. But then when that had finished, Soul Train, then that band uh, morphed into McCoy. And they were the backing band for McCoy for a couple of gigs. And then the rest is history. It's a kind of magic. The Flashback Show. It's a kind of magic. Across the World Wide Web. A kind of magic. DJ Illusion. It's a kind of magic. Now, back to The Flashback Show. Welcome back to The Flashback Show. We have a very special guest this evening. Mr. No McCoy. Yeah, I'm back. I'd like to ask you... What message would you like to give to your fans out there? I'd like to give like a message of of thanks, you know, thanks for giving your support to me for my music throughout the years. Because there's so many um, emails I get and stuff, and they're uplifting, and on social media, and there are people who's who's been supporting me for many years. So all I can say is thanks to all of you because without you, nothing ain't re- I don't have a, a career in music. I love music, I'll always make music, but you make it a career for me, so I give thanks for that. So we know you're going to be out and about very soon, so what upcoming shows do you have well, for your fans out there to come and visit? Where can they find you? Okay, so this month, in, in the month of October, um, it's not a show, but on the 10th of this month, of 10th of October, the British Collective will be receiving an, an award uh, from the Boysdale, um, several other UK soul acts. We're in the soul category and we'll get an award for that. So that's on the 10th of um, October at the Canary Wharf, uh, Boysdale. And then um, I, um, what date is it? So on the 15th of October, I start an album project with Mio Mucker, James Taylor from the James Taylor Quartet. We, first time in maybe 20 years, we're, we're working together again. So we're doing an album for um, a project, which uh, that's all I'll say is more to come. And then on the on the 21st of this month, I'm on the Robert Elm show. Um, and it's a show talking about uh, where you come from, where you live, your community and how it's changed, and etc. Do you still live there? Stuff like that. So I'm, I'm in a panel with a few other guests. That's on the 21st. Um, and then on the 25th of this month, I'll be at the Birmingham, uh, what's the venue called? We're doing Jazz, Jazz Jamaica. I'll be, I did a tour with them last year, um, celebrating the 50 years of Trojan Records. So we're doing it again. Uh, myself um, and Brinzy Ford from Aswad, ex Aswad, will be performing those classics by you know so many classics that you know more um, so that's on the 25th in Birmingham and then I have a gig on the 26th the next day actually I'm doing it's not a, yeah it's a gig I'm doing this sort of jam thing with some bad musicians uh, guys who play with from George Michael to to most of the UK you know the British Collective so I'm doing this um, a project it's in Norwood South Norwood I don't have too much information on that but it's in the diary and I'll be it's kind of like a jam stroke. They'll do some of my songs as well. So I'm looking forward to that. So if the fans could just visit your website, the dates are on there. Will they be available for them to check you out there? Yeah, yeah. So if you just put in, if you just put in Noel McCoy, uh, Jazz Jamaica, everything will come up. Fantastic. And you also have a lot of dates coming up next year in 2020 as well. Yes. I know you'll be in Liverpool, Birmingham and Bristol as well. That's right. That, that's, that's what we'll be doing with the Jazz Jamaica. We'll be touring until August of next year. And October of next year, I think on the 27th, we're at the Royal Festival Hall 2020. So I'll be touring with that. I'll also be touring my stuff, uh, my album. And um, lots of other projects where I have been working on, they should be all coming out next year. So next year is going to be crazy busy. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, God willing. You know, I'm there for it. Let's carry on with the questions. You're a member of the British Collective band featuring yourself, Donnie Jr., Lee John, and Omar, the creme de la creme of soul music. Tell us what it's like working on the British Collective album Volume 1, The Renaissance Begins, which was released in 2016. Yeah, but I, I I've never heard of them guys. I don't know what you're on about. The album, the whole project, 
you know, I've known these guys many years before we hooked up. We were always talking about hooking up, doing something like this. And it's a blessing that it's happening and people really love it. I really enjoy hanging with and working with the guys because everybody knows their their worth. They know, you know, what they all bring to the table and it's it's very exciting. I mean, it's one of the most exciting shows in this country. Um, it's just for people to see it. Um, but we're working on that. We're working on, um, you know, liaising with some proper promoters, etc., and them getting us to work so that people can take the show in because it's a it's a very upbeat, exciting. It's almost like a rap pack. The last gig we did was almost like a rap pack. Omar was firing on the jokes, Junior, and then we all bounced off one another. It was quite hilarious actually. So you get fun and you get good music and you get good vocals and great band. Our band is hot. They've been with us from day dot. So, yeah, being with the collective is um, a real pleasure. Yeah, make sure you check them out. I mean, I've seen them live a few times and the vibe is just unbelievable. How do you all feed off each other well, musically? How we feed off one another is several ways. I, you know, we all need to eat, so Omar has to pay me and then I'll feed off of him. And if I want to, Junior wants me to feed off him, he has to pay me something like £200 <laughs> a shot. So feeding off of one another is really good business for me. <laughs> but feeding off, I get what you say. We feed off one another naturally because we've all been doing this so long that when we get on the stage, when we rehearse, in terms of harmony bass, we, we find it so quick to do the harms because the whole album was written um, for our vocal to, to um, you know, everybody knows one another's key and range. So we can slip in even into two different harmonies. Mm. We, we do that a lot because our musical uh, knowledge and experience is so vast. It, we don't, that's, not, that's not the problem. In fact, that's, that's the highlight of our sound is our voices. So you know, the great thing is we, we get on and feed off one another just so naturally. It's amazing. So what's your favourite song from the Bridge Collective album? Yeah, well, my favourite songs on that album is Love Me Tonight, definitely, and Things Can Only Get Better. I love that song. I haven't played that in ages.
Don't you go anywhere. DJ, DJ Illusion. One, two, three, kick. Illusion, it's a loving illusion. 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 DJ Illusion. Hi, I'm Noel McCoy, and you're listening to DJ Illusion on the Flashback Show. Now. Back to the Flashback Show. Welcome back to the Flashback Show with my special guest this Monday evening, Noel McCoy. So we are running a special competition right now. A signed copy of the brand new album, People Make Change, from Mr. Noel McCoy. What will be the question you'd ask the fans out there to get a signed copy from you? A simple question, really. Um, what year did Family come out, the first official release of Family. What year was it? So what year was a single Family released? All answers. www.djillusion.co.uk Use our Facebook page to leave your answer and we'll be chosen at random. Before we go, no, what's next for you? What's next for me? Um, well, these projects, what I was I sort of mentioned, a project called Sisters in Spirit. It's a reggae um, project I've been... Um, doing for the past few years so we're going to put an album out with uh, seven different singers um, singing covers from the Lovers Rock and Roots era um, and I'm, I'm really um, excited to say that um, the great Pauline Catlin from Brown Sugar will be um, contributing the song um, we haven't done that song yet but all the other songs are done and mixed so yeah that's one of the projects I also have a project with a uh, similar project but with the males, um, 12 songs with seven, eight different arts I've been working with. Um, ca- classic reggae covers of Roots and Lovers Rock. Plus my new projects, what I've been working with, my band McCoy. Um, plus a few other stuff with artists on my label. So yeah, um, I've got a lot happening, a lot to um, to deal with, yeah, for 2020 onwards. No, once again, it's been a pleasure having you on... It's been it's been great having been on it. <laughs> what you saying? Like Lee John there? <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to. That's how it sounds, isn't it? Yeah, I've really thanks for having me. Um, I've really had a good time. It's just like you know, really, really relaxed and enough jokes. Thanks for having me. I tell you, I don't think I've laughed so much off here in my life. What's your last words you got to say on the flashback show to the fans out there before you go? Keep it soulful, keep it funky, and people make change. That's it. Noel's brand new album right now. People make change. Noel, it's been a pleasure. Hope to catch up soon. Yes, I. Yes, I. Thanks for having me, Illusion. Give thanks. Take care. The voice of reason you have just heard belongs to the renowned DJ DJ Illusion. Don't don't touch that dial. Stop playing with that radio of yours. I'm trying to get to sleep. The Flashback Show across the World Wide Web.